hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bibbo TV. My name is Allison Rouseshore, most notorious groupie, and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, Me. That's right, folks. And many of you notice what's going on behind me. I moved in, not completely ready, totally settled in, but I'm getting there. So, welcome to my new home. And to break in my new home, yes, I've already masturbated, so it's mine. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. But anyway. <laughs> so, we're going to do a cocktail rock tail, the first one from my new location. And today we're going to do a good one. We're going to do one of the times I got to hang out with Vinnie Paul when they were on OzFest. So this is, let's see, June 28th. Oh, Jesus. What's with me in June? And Vinnie passed away, I believe, June 28th. Wow. What a trip. Anyway, so yeah, this is going to be Vince and Paul. Ooh. June 28th of 1997 during the OzFest tour when Pantera was playing with them. Oh my God. One of the few times that I drank that much at a concert. And of course, as usual, to celebrate Vince and Paul, we're going to do a little bit of Crown Royal because he always loved his crown. So everybody, kick up your feet, grab the crowns, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Mm. Whew. So strong, and as, crown isn't exactly my thing because of this night that we're about to talk about. <laughs> oh, God. So this is June of 1997. Uh, Cousin Amy's back on the scene. Crazy Lisa's out of the picture, thank God. Uh, Ozfest was coming into town with Pantera, so Vinny gave us a call, or gave me a call, put me on the guest list. They were not in town the night before. They were staying a couple of days past the concerts, but they were not in town the night before, so Cousin Amy and I, and this is one of the first times she had really been to a concert with me, we had been to the Ramones, but this was a whole different experience because this is someone that I had had a long term relationship and friendship with and stuff. So kind of a different ball game than the average Ramones concert that we had been to. So we get to the big arena. It was at the McKay arena, which is over by UNLV in Las Vegas. Cause this is my Las Vegas years. I forgot to say that. So we get there and we go to the, we go to the will, will call where we pick up our tickets and passes and, grab our passes and we have tickets I never use them like you see it they're not even in my scrapbooks because I just don't use them I usually toss them away or I give them away to people standing out front that say want tickets something like that depending anyway so we get to the arena and cousin Amy asks where's our seats oh no Amy we don't have seats. <laughs> I'm like, just follow me. I'm like, we don't even need to worry about it. Just follow me. So we had our passes. I always put my pass on my purse so it doesn't ruin my clothes or my purse, really. You can get off, get it off the purse easier. But anyway, so we go. If you're facing the front of the stage, we were up on the off the floor in the um, arena and had come just come screaming down. And I decided to walk up above if you're facing the stage to stage left above where the um, backstage door was. Not two seconds after going there to that spot, because we didn't have cell phones in the day, and I was just trying to figure out, you know, chance to see Vinny. I kind of gave him an idea of what time I would be there. So as we get there, and all these guys are catcalling Cousin Amy and I, and they're like, where's your seats? We're like, fuck you, we don't need seats. So we stand there for a second, right on the railing above the backstage door, not two seconds. Out comes Vincent Paul. And I, I looked down. I'm like, Vincent Paul! And he's like, hey, there's my girl. He's like, I was just coming out to see if you were here. He's like, I just had this feeling you were here. Well, of course we were here. How's he at? So Cousin Amy, and she's like, what? She's like, we don't, where's our seats? I'm like, Amy, that stage, that's our seats. We will be sitting on the side of that stage. That's how we will enjoy the whole concert. Ozzy, Pantera, I don't even remember who was playing. Because Pantera is always, like I said, they're always known as the most hospitable, fun, awesome party band. 
and they definitely were this night because in Las Vegas they had a few porn stars backstage including Gina Fine which is cousin Amy and I run down Vinny and I give it give each other a hug the crowd that was standing with us above was like oh yeah fucking rock on dude woo so we cruise to the dressing room I introduce Amy and cousin or cousin Amy and Vinny cousin Vinny <laughs> He wasn't my cousin, Vinny, that's for sure. Anyway, so we go into the dressing room, and the first person we see walking in is porn star Gina Fine. Vinny introduces us to her, and she's like, oh, Vinny's been talking about you all day. It's good to meet you. She doesn't shake our hands. She puts her hands underneath cousin and Amy and I's dresses. Pills are vajayjays. Hi. Nice to meet you, too. And she wasn't really violated. She was like, okay, cool. Walked on by. We'd just go into the dressing room. Start drinking. And we had already started drinking. We had stopped by Kelly's Casino, which is no longer there. It was just this tiny little hole-in-the-wall bar next to Little Darlings, where we were working at the time. And um, I had already been drinking. So I had had a drink or two before we even hit Ozfest. Then we go in the dressing room. And Vinny's like, more drinks. Grabs me a beer. Everybody take a couple shots of Crown. Oh, Jeezy Crazy. No, 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 no. This, I haven't eaten very much all day. Like, we got to the gig around 2 o'clock. So I had only had breakfast by the time we went to the bar and then got to the gig and had a beer and a shot of Crown. Okay, I'm cool right about there. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. Time to go on stage. Cat, um, Vinny has Cat, who's drum tech, who pushed him out of the way the night um, of the shooting years and years later but um, has Kat take us onto the stage I have never seen a Pantera show from the front of the stage it's always by Vinny's drum riser because he doesn't even let me stand on the side of the stage he would always have me stand right by his drum kit because then we could I would oh Kat always had such great weed so he would have the joints Vinny would be making sure we all got shots of crown and it was awesome. And there is a link um, to this actual concert where you can actually see Cousin Amy and I kind of peeking out from the back by the drum kit. I'll put the link down in the description. So we're just hanging out. And Vinny, the whole show, Cousin Amy and I are just fucking rocking out. It's Pantera in the arena, like fucking at the high Pantera when everybody else was selling out to metal against metal. And... The only metal band besides Metallica and Megadeth that were really doing. Like, when they talk about the top four of metal, they've never included Pantera. It's always like, Anthrax. Well, I'm sorry, guys, and Anthrax. I love Anthrax, but Pantera was way fucking better. Anthrax has no business being in the top four legends of metal. Sorry, but they don't. Anyway, so we're just watching the show. The whole time, Cats just... And I haven't eaten all day. We still haven't eaten. I'm getting super drunk on an empty stomach. Oh, it was getting bad. I was like, no, tell Vincent Paul to stop. Stop sending me the shots. I'll keep smoking the weed, but no more shots. Because, I mean, there was probably about six shots done during the whole Pantera set. And keep in mind, this is Ozfest, and there's other, you know, Zach Wilds hanging out. We're all smoking weed on the back with, on the back of the stage with him. You know, Cousin Amy and I are peeking out every so often to see the rest of the show, because we could only really see, like, who was running in front of this one area. So we'd peek out to see Dime and Phil and everybody else having fun. That's cool. Show gets over. Pantera's hosting more fun in their dressing room. So there's other bands and local musicians and roadies that are all backstage, we're mingling. Vinny's, do another ground, do another shot, girlfriend, come on. And I'm like, Vincent Paul, I, I just can't. And he's like, he's like, no, it's okay, girl. Come on, I got you. I'll take care of you. Because he always took really good care of me. I was so drunk. And by the time Ozzy goes on, he's like, yeah, let's go watch some Ozzy. So he, cousin Amy and I, go onto the side of the stage for Ozzy. I'm just drunk as fuck at this point. I'm just drunk. I can still stay on my own two feet and not wobble very much while I'm walking in my big old platform big girl heels, which Vin always hated when I wore my platform big girl heels because I was always about this much taller, that much taller than him. <laughs> so we're on the side of the stage and Vin, Vin was just being really sweet and affectionate all night long. 
So as we're watching, Cousin Amy's rocking out and Vince just whispering in my ear. He's like, God, girl, I've missed you so much. He's like, it's so good to see you. He's like, every time we're together, he's like, I just feel like I'm at home. He's like, it's, you're the only other person in the world that calls me Vincent Paul because it's so comforting. He's like, I love being with you, girl. And right then, we just, I just thought it was so sweet that we just grabbed each other and started making out on the side of the stage. Roadies and everything were stopping and clapping. You could hear the hoot hollering. Just making out side of the stage. Keep this in mind. This will come into play later. I'm not going to tell you now. But. Didn't think anything of it. And I'm like, Van, I'm really tipsy. I got to get off. I got to get out of here get some fresh air. And Cousin Amy kind of was too. So he takes Cousin Amy and I onto his and Dimes tour bus. And he's like, here, eat some Taco Bell. And I'm like, I don't really eat meat. He's like, eat the fucking Taco Bell. Girl, you're drunk. So I'm like, noshing on this taco. I've got lettuce. <laughs> drop it into my lap Vin's like girl he's like yeah you are drunk and Vin has never seen me this drunk ever I rarely get this drunk even when I'm drinking tons of champagne at the hard rock or you know I keep a good check on myself because it's okay to have a nice tipsy going tipsy going on but to be sloppy drunk mm -mm. don't let that happen ladies no but I was about I was like one more shot away from sloppy drunk I was just on that little edge so Vin's like well we should get back to the hotel I'm like yeah but we gotta take cousin Amy he's like well you can't drive I'm like well I'll give you directions can you drive he's like yeah yeah I'm good so we jump I had a white Cherokee Jeep Cherokee at the time we jump into there and I'm just so fucking drunk cousin Amy's sitting in the back seat she's kind of halfway passed out Vinny's driving the car I crawl into the back seat because I'm like, oh, Vin, I'm like, I just, I gotta lay down. I gotta lay down because I was, even on the bus, Diamond Rita had come on the bus and he's, and Rita's like, I've never seen you so drunk. I'm like, me neither. <laughs> but Vin kept sending me all these shots, you know, take another shot on the stage, take another shot after the show. This is why I, you see, you won't see me doing very much of the shots of Crown after this night. So we're driving around. I crawl in the back seat with Cousin Amy, and I just, I just start lay down and start to go to sleep. And all I can hear is, hey, hey, Allie, Allison, you can't do that. He's like, where do you live? I don't know Las Vegas, because this is long before he moved to Las Vegas. So he's like, I don't know where the fuck I'm going. <laughs> so I guess what ended up happening, he ended up waking Cousin Amy up. Having Cousin Amy take him back, take him back to his hotel. Because, like I said, he was going to be in town for a couple days. I had to go to work the next night and do some feature shows for magazines that I was doing. So, anyway. All I know is a couple hours later, I wake up in the back seat of my own Cherokee in our my parking spot at Cousin Amy and I's apartment. Don't know how I got there, but she left the front door open and I just, I crawled into her bed. I was like, hey. I'm like, where's Vin? She's like, oh, I took him back, you know, because you were drunk and passed out. He said to call him tomorrow. She's like, but I, and I tried to wake you up to put you, you know, to get you to come in the house with me. She's like, but I couldn't, so I just left you there. I was like, okay, cool. So, you know, walked in. Anyway, go to sleep. Go to the club the next day. There's a bunch of girls that were at OzFest the night before. And Vixen, one of the girls, she was this goth, one of the, uh, club's goth punk girls really cute girl really sweet she was like I saw you last night oh my god she's like I was so drunk and I look up and I see you I'm like where did you see me did you were you standing back by backstage or something she's like no she's like I look up and I on the monitors while Ozzy was playing and Vinny and Amy, cousin Amy and I were on the side of the stage they had the camera guy and the whole monitors, all they showed in the crowd was me and Vincent Paul making out. So all the arena, 20,000 people. And that's what Vixen said. She says, I look up and she's like, there's Sienna. Holy shit, she really does know Vinny Paul. And if there's just a cousin Amy just sitting there rocking out next to Vinny and I, well, we're just like on this road case just about to hoe down. And I'm talking, I was going to hoe, go down on him. Because <laughs> I was drunk and horny, so... Yeah, so I found out that all of OzFest saw Vin and I make it out. Well, good, Las Vegas. Now you know not to put your hands on my boy when he's in town. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, 
What can I say? I'm a bit possessive of my stables. Hmm. Not really, but you know. I like to have a good time. So, anyway, Vin calls me. He's like, how you doing, girl? I'm like, oh, fine. He's like, you're not hungover? Because, you know, back then you could just bounce right up. Drink all night, sleep for a couple hours, go right at it again. Have a Bloody Mary, greasy breakfast, you know, that type of thing. So we go to hang out, and I tell Vin about it. He's like, what? He's like, we were on the screen. I'm like, yeah, we were totally making out for all the world to see. He's like, cool. He's like, I got, he's like, now everybody knows I just made out with the hottest chick in Vegas. Like, yeah, I really do know her. <laughs> so anyway, we hung out. We went golfing that day because Vin's a golfer. I love to golf too. So we went golfing on Steve Wynn's private golf course and had a great time. And golfing for rock and roll, there's been a golf game that goes on. Anybody like Glenn Tipton and KK and uh, Zach Wild and Vin and all the boys, whenever we were all together, we all play golf. There's been a game going on for years, for a few decades. And that's why Vinny named his strip club in Dallas the clubhouse. Because he loves golf. More than he loves Crown Royal, actually. Or used to love. I forget that he's gone sometimes. But, yeah. So we went golfing, hung out. He never fed me that much Crown Royal again. He let me take control of my own drinking habit. Because otherwise, he wouldn't end up in bed with me. He might have ended up on the monitors making out with me. But he didn't get to the really, really fun stuff that night. But we did the rest of the time he was in town. So, there we go. There's the second time I was with Vinnie Paul. Porn star grabbing my JJ and the whole world watching Vin and I go at it on big screen. Good times. Not as crazy as watching Steve Jones zoom in when we made a sex tape. Yeah, I said it. Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols and I, we have a sex tape. I don't know if he still has it, but wasn't quite as wild as watching, you know, that was way more wild than watching Vin and I on the screen. So there we go. Another little crazy wild time making out with Vin, playing some golf, having a good time, and realizing, and this is what, two years into Vinny and I's eight years. A lot of people ask me if I've ever actually fallen in love, and yeah, of course, with all the guys that I've dated in my social circle, of course you're going to fall in love, that just happens. And this was one of the times that I realized that I was really so in love with Vin, that there was so much more going on, and he was me too, he admitted it, and there was a lot more going on between us, and actually he bought me this furry purse that was unfortunately stolen when I had my, uh storage unit broken into but yeah he had bought me this furry purse we had gone to the hard rock so he could buy some t-shirts and stuff and he comes out and pulls something out of the bag and surprises me as we get into my uh suv and he's like here you go girl flops his little furry purse he's like because i noticed you had a different fur purse every night that we were hanging out and he's like so i figured you didn't, didn't have this one <laughs> i was like no and i oh i never really used that purse because it wasn't my style but it, I always kept it because it meant so much to me because Vin thought about me in little ways like that. One of the ways I knew he loved me and another way I knew I loved him because every time I left his hotel room, I cried. Such a pussy. I should have slapped myself silly, but there was a lot to fall in love with Vin. So there you go, guys. Number three, this is the third time actually of meeting Vincent Paul, of hanging out with Vin. Uh, this is when he actually gave me his cards, which were also things stolen out of my boxes when my storage unit was broken into a few years back. Um, gave me his card, his home phone number, his pager number, his sky pager number, his, this is before cell phones, his mother's number, everything. So I had every phone number you could ever reach Vin on. And this is another reason how I knew, because things between rock stars and groupies aren't just sex, drugs, rock and roll, see you later, ho. Mm-mm. No. That may be for back lounge Bettys and star fuckers, but for groupies slash road wives, emotions happen, and boy, is it a big mistake every single fucking time. Never fall in love with the rock stars, ladies. Keep them as great friends your whole lives. You'll enjoy much 
pleasurable relationship, less complications. But I was about to get into some serious complications with Vinnie Paul, and I knew it. So tune in for another one. I'll tell you more about it, and I'll tell you about the second time we met, because it wasn't real crazy, but it, yeah, it kind of was. Why he got a caught instead of letting the... Anyway, we'll vlog about that. So, all right, guys. Thanks for listening to my babble. It is so awesome to meet you guys. Even people who have said, I don't know half the bounds you're talking about, but I love watching you and you're so fun to watch. Oh, my God, you guys. that It means so much to me. Everybody who has been really supportive, having a great time with me, I cannot tell you how much I love you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. All right, guys, don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit my bells. See you next week for some more cocktails and rocktails. Cheers, big ears.